Okay, now it is that time as we near the midterm where we need to make things print ready. And if we look at our weekly modules, this is what's coming up. So we make a lot of digital art and that gives us digital files, but just digital files on their own aren't product. They give us the ability to print. So in order to do our midterm critique, which is unit 10, we're actually gonna print out three projects that we've worked on so far. I'd like one of them to be your logo, either your color or black and white logo, probably not both. And so what I want you to do is to review your finished digital artwork. That, so it can be either exercises one or two, proving ground number one, which was when we uh, put our creature into a landscape, or assignment one, which is where we did a fantasy landscape, or assignment two, where we did a fantasy creature, or assignment three, which is where what we animated. If you're going to print that, you're going to print your, your refined storyboard, your final storyboard, and then assignment four, your logo. And then once everyone has their work printed, you're going to mat it in black mats. You're going to use the 11 by 14 mats on the outside with an 8 by 10 window. I will print your three selections on 8 by 10 Epson photo presentation mat paper. And we, I will show you how to tape them into your mats and we will put them on the critique rails in the classroom and we will have a process that you can read about, which is proving ground number three in order to critique them. Your portfolio will earn through this process um, a score out of 10 points. So to kind of prepare your mind for this at the midterm, we have a self-assessment set of five questions I'd like you to answer. A lot like a, a question of the day, except there's no word requirement. You just need to answer all five of these questions. And it's thinking about your journey and your learning so far. It helps you be more empathetic looking at other people's work, right? Because we've all been through this together. But it also helps you reflect on where you can improve. So if you scroll down through those, then we get to proving ground number three. And this is what we'll be doing in one week's time with your finished artworks. You're each going to pick five student portfolios that you think are worth critiquing. I ask you to try to find two that you think are particularly strong, two that you think are average, and one that you think is weak or needs improvement. And then you're going to score these portfolios, these, these artworks that are printed and matted, so you'll see, see them with quality, not just on screens. And you're going to base your uh, point score out of 10 points on the idea behind the work, on the execution of the work, and then the amount of effort that it took. And then for your favorite projects, you're going to give them the pizzazz point that they really caught your attention and held your attention. So you can read through that. That is, and then you're going to send your scores to me through the inbox. So this is all blind balloting. And then your actual score will be the average of all the scores that you got from your fellow classmates. Right. And that's how you get a, a score out of 10 points on your portfolio. So it really makes sense to, to pick your best project so far and to present them in a way that, that really looks good. So if you can do that, you'll meet all the requirements of this proving ground. A big part of it, this is part of creative problem solving, is managing your own anxiety. We are creative people. It's hard to have your work looked at critically. And so the best way to manage your own anxiety is to think about how you would critique your own examples before showing them to other people, right? So I want you to know how your stuff is going to be viewed and scored so that you can prepare yourself by thinking how you would score your own work. And then, of course, making sure you pick your best work and really try to control this experience. You'll feel less anxiety if you know how it's going to be done and how you can control it. Okay. So, how do we get our projects ready for actual printing in the class? 
rather than just posting here, but you'll also post them here. We have to make sure that they meant they they meet print quality. <coughs> so print resolution professionally, the standard minimum for print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. <coughs> Excuse my my raspy voice. Let me take a drink of water. All right, so we have already done that in how we prepared our vector. The beauty of a vector is it can be any size you want. So if you remember that process, they were just in, in the last videos for assignment four. We brought our EPS files into a Photoshop space, and this could be done in PhotoP as well. And this is how we did it. And this is how I suggest you do it. Go to Photoshop and say file new. Create a new file that is eight by 10 inches. I'm gonna make this one 10 inches wide by eight inches tall at 350 pixels per inch. That's 50 pixels per inch beyond the standard minimum print resolution. That's professional. That's so if while we are printing, we want to make it up just a little bit bigger, we think it would look better, we have the resolution for that and it won't lessen in quality. And I have to decide, okay, what assignment do I wanna have as my first print? And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna think, okay, I can even use exercises here. So not exercise zero, just because that was a, kind of a self-portrait thing. But exercise one, we use real skills and compositing. This was my exercise one in color. This was my exercise one in black. I could use either one of those. And I might choose it because I really liked the ideas I had for it. I thought I, I finished it fully, but that's not one of my favorites. Then there was my logo that I designed. And I even worked a little extra on it and gave it a background. And yeah, this one's this one's pretty fun. Maybe that's in the running for, for one of my midterm printouts. And you're welcome to print more than three as well. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's one. And then I had my first assignment, which was a landscape. And it looks pretty good. I could print that. Might be nice. And then I had my creature, just the creature on its own. And that might be interesting. You can decide based on the ideas you put into it, how finished you thought it was, how well executed it was, and how much effort you put into it. Then there was proving ground number one, where we took, which is often a good candidate for printing because it shows off your work for your landscape and for your creature. And this is where we combined, put our creatures into our fantasy landscapes. Sometimes reviewing the work I can see that I overdo things sometimes, like that text, those texture fills were pretty heavy. And so I might even wanna go back and address that a little bit before printing it. So it's getting you to look back at your work. And then if you're going to print from assignment three, your animation, you can't print an animated file, but you can print your refined storyboard the one that shows the different steps that tell the story of your transformation. So if I were to print this assignment, I would print this, this one. So I think I'll print this one. I'll print a logo. I'll print a lens. Um, 
yeah, I'll print, I'll print this one. I'll print a lo my, um, my logo and I'll print my, my emoji. So let's start with the logo. My assignment four. I created a few different versions and I posted them in the um, assignment four area. So I have to pick what I think if I want to print this project, and I'm hoping you will all print one of your logos. Because it's very easy to make a vector print ready. But I can choose this one, which is just flat black shapes. I can choose this one, which had the stroke and the drop shadow on the black shapes. I can choose this one, which had the gradient and the, and the outline stroke and the uh, inner glow that was textured. Or I could choose the one that's embossed. And I think I'll, I'll pick this one. So what do I do? I go and I find that image. The best case is to find that PSD. Right? And print from that. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up that PSD. And then I'm going to make sure that it's outside dimensions. You can see I have the rulers here. You want to make sure that it's outside dimensions are 8 by 10 inches. That is the window of your mat. And a way to assure this is to just go to File New once you're in Photoshop. Create a new file that is 8 by 10 inches. This one I'll make 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall at 350 pixels per inch with all the defaults. And then you can bring on your project. So this is a good way to center it as well. So if I know I want to use exercise two, I can take my most finished exercise and drag and drop it on. Just like we did with our EPS file. And my file was bigger than it needs to be. So now, just like we did with our logo, I can hold down Shift and Option, or not Shift. That used to be the case. You don't hold down Shift if you want to lock proportions. But I want to hold down Option so that it goes towards the center. And when I look at this, this 8 by 10 piece of paper, I want to think of this black space as being the black mat that surrounds it. And I'm going to center it, but then I'm also going to nudge it up a little bit. Because when the eye looks at something that's matted, it tends to make it fall. So generally, you have a little bit more space on the bottom than you do at the top. So I think this would look good as a printout. And now, because I brought it into this space, I make sure that it's 8 by 10 inches by 350. It is. Then I can flatten it. So layer, flatten image. And then I'm going to save it as a new file type. I'm going to say file save as. And I'm going to call this. So I'm going to call it critique artwork one. And instead of saving it as a PSD file, we're going to save it as a new file format. This is what's called an archive file format. Remember, this doesn't overwrite my assignment. This is a new Photoshop file. It's 350 at 8 by 10. My original project might be much bigger than that. And instead of Photoshop, I'm going to save it as a TIFF, T-I-F-F. -F. It's the last format under the Save As options. What TIFF is, is an archiving format which means it doesn't lose any quality. And it has the extra advantage of being able to save some space on this screen under the TIFF options. I want you to all choose image compression, LZW. LZW is a lossless type of compression. It just takes a little bit longer to save, a little bit longer to open, 
but you will never lose quality and it won't take up as much computer space. Did I say?